son of a... Sharks, Mago Sharks, Bull Sharks, Lone Sharks, Shark Boy, Shark Tank, Shark Cards, Sharky Shark, and the Sharky Bunch. Sharks are great, and the use of these crazy killer machines in movies is as bloated as Chris Farley at a Golden Corral. Search shark movies and you'll find just a multitude of crazy films. You got Swamp Shark, Ghost Shark, Super Shark, Shark Tail, and Shark the Puss vs. Frickin' Whale Wolf. I mean, did you hear the last one? Shark the Puss vs. Frickin' Whale Wolf. There's just countless stupid shark movies out there. Don't even get me started on Sharknado. N no, go, go away, get out. I love shark movies, but not all of the stupid shit I just mentioned. Because while I love stupid movies, a lot of these shark movies are just incredibly boring. I think the worst thing a stupid movie can be is boring. So when Sci-Fi Channel throws $30 at a shark movie that has like three scenes that are just poor CGI sharks, and instead adds two hours of boring conversations, I get a little sad. I grew up with an obsession of sharks as a kid, so I wanted to see them presented in every possible medium. When I first discovered Jaws, I was entranced in the slow but tense journey these guys were going on. It was such a perfect experience! So when I dove into the sequels, I got incredibly sad they got stupider and stupider with each release. And not even entertaining stupidity, just most of it is dull as crap. Hello out there. This is Calvin Bouchard. May I please have your kind attention? Due to technical difficulties, it has become necessary for us to temporarily close the undersea kingdom. Now, for those of y'all... So imagine my excitement when I discovered the stupidest, yet most entertaining, shark movie I have ever seen, Deep Blue Sea. To me, this movie is a pure classic. It has the perfect budget to give just the right amount of shark terror and crazy production value that makes these types of movies actually work. Every element of this movie just brings a smile to my face. The characters aren't fleshed out in any way, but the cast is so stupidly cheesy in places that it's just so much fun. Did someone order the fish? I mean, this movie has LL Cool J in his best role yet. He plays a badass chef with a parrot. Spoilers! So, okay, it has the most basic plot of a monster action flick. You have an advanced lab where scientists are doing an experiment, but everything goes wrong and pretty much everyone dies. It actually has the same premise as Rise of the Planet of the Apes. You have scientists experimenting on animals to find a cure for brain diseases, but it ends up making the animals smarter and they rage against the machine and shit. The difference between the two is that the apes win in their movies, the sharks all explode in theirs. Because you can sympathize as a viewer with a human-like ape, but you can't with a bloodthirsty killing machine. I adore this movie simply because of the set pieces. It uses the classic shark movie setting of an underwater facility and uses everything in its physical space to create the most insanely fun moments. Let's start by talking about the production of the film. So screenwriter Duncan Kennedy noticed some people get murked on the beach by a shark one day and this haunted the fuck out of him in his real life. He would have nightmares of sharks reading his mind and this inspired him to start working on the script for this film where there's a bunch of genius sharks. But of course, he didn't want to approach it like Jaws. Because literally any semi-serious shark movie is always compared to Jaws. Director Rennie Harlan came onto the project and wanted to separate his movie from Jaws as much as possible by showing the sharks in any way they could. In the original Jaws, the shark was barely shown, which added incredible tension, but this was mainly due to the fact that the massive machine constantly broke down like it heard a My Chemical Romance song. Because the drugs never work. But luckily since this movie was made in the golden era of cheesy 90s CGI, they were able to incorporate many shots of fake sharks along with the machines they built. They even went far enough to film actual sharks with the actors, which supposedly terrified the fuck out of the actor Thomas Jane. If people knew how many sharks they're swimming with when they go to the beach, they wouldn't go to the beach. But my favorite part about the production is the set design. They used the large water tankers that James Cameron had to film Titanic, and it just makes me so happy to experience a set piece like this. Without the set piece, the movie falls apart. The actors truly suffered with the intense hours they had to stay submerged in the water for pretty much the whole film. At one point, the actors even got struck by three tons of water by accident and they completely kept the shot in. This movie sticks in my mind because it's a high budget action thriller that takes advantage of the fact that it's high budget. It doesn't skimp out on anything. You have an amazing set, plenty of amazing shark shots, aside from the 1999 CGI, incredibly tough and dangerous filming conditions, and 
Overall, it's just a blast to watch. So the movie starts like any classic shark movie. We get a bunch of random people out in the water just having a grand old time. They always soon get attacked by a shark, but in every other movie that does this, the randos die. But here, they're saved. Which already tells you this movie is gonna have some weird tricks up its sleeve. The sharks that attacked the randos on the boat was actually a mako shark being tested on at a special underwater facility. The people funding this facility send Samuel L. Jackson who plays Russell Franklin to go check out what is up. When he gets there he witnesses Thomas Jane who plays Carter Blake swim with a shark which I actually believe is a real shot. And then he rides it to take out a license plate out of its mouth. The license plate is actually a nod to a scene in Jaws since they're basically the same plate. But that's the only kind of feeling you'll get towards Jaws in the entire movie. We then continue to meet our charming and cheesy cast around the facility, each one with the right amount of genericness and lack of special character moments so you don't really know who's gonna get murked or not. We then meet LL Cool J feeding whipped cream to his parrot while the parrot says he has a thick butt. You got a big fat butt. I mean, it's just pure cinematic art. The sharks eat another shark because he's intellectually inferior, and Saffron Burrows, who plays Susan McAllister, gets thrown a birthday party. We then learn a hurricane is about to hit the facility, so oh boy, buckle up, shit is about to get insane real fast. Carter tranquilizes a shark, so they continue to do experiments on it. They poke and prod it for brain juices and we get one of the most iconic shark scenes in my eyes. This dumbass leads down next to it and smokes. But obviously the shark is like, bitch, I don't wanna smell that shit. So he rips his arm clean off. Now just pay attention to the poor fellow that just got his arm ripped off because he's about to go through literal hell. Carter does the only smart thing and grabs a random shotgun from a case and prepares to shoot it. But dumbass Susan sets the shark free because her research is more important. So the comms girl in the tower calls for an emergency chopper and we see that the hurricane has rolled in. Once the chopper arrives, they strap the one-armed willy fellow to the bottom for transport. As the others make their way back inside, they get struck by by the three tons of water that I mentioned earlier which is just fantastic to see them flail around because they had no safety harnesses whatsoever. The device used to hold one armed willy in place randomly breaks and drops this poor guy in the water while he's still attached leading for this one cord to drag the entire fucking chopper straight into the facility killing the lady in the comms tower. So we follow the group back underground in the lab and just get the perfectly genius scene that Sharknado couldn't even think of. This shark used one armed willy as a battering ram and smashes the glass leading to the flooding of the entire facility. These sharks are pure geniuses and I absolutely adore it. So we cut back to LL Cool J exploring the facility and wondering what's happening and he gets struck with a flood. And from what I've seen, that's not a stunt double. LL Cool J is actually being swept by the force of the water, which is just so badass. We then cut to the normal group where Susan tells everyone how they had to give the sharks steroids in order to properly experiment on them. As a side effect, the sharks got smarter. You stupid bitch. Then we cut back to LL Cool J who meets a shark just strolling down his fucking hallway and we cut back and forth between Cool J and the group. We get Cool J battling in the kitchen against a shark and the group figuring out a way to escape. And maybe yet another one of my favorite stupid set pieces, LL Cool J gets trapped in the oven which the shark actually turns on leading to LL to axe his way out through the top turn around and somehow explode him in the process. And then we cut back once again to the group for yet another amazing set piece, where we have Russell give a motivational speech to the group. Now you've seen how bad things can get and how quick they can get that way. Well, they can get a whole lot worse. But while he's giving a pretty great speech, this shark pops out of the water and instantly kills him in the most over the top way possible. The scene is fantastic because you don't expect it. I mean, they're pretty much in a safe area where pretty much one of the top build actors is giving a touching moment, but is very quickly shot down and it's just fucking great. So instead of, well, going the way Russell just got murked, the group goes up an elevator shaft that soon gets flooded, leading to them to climb a ladder with sharks below them and freaking fire above. I mean, it's just pure, never ending chaos. The ladder breaks, one girl dies, and LL Cool J comes out and saves the day. They continue to find a way to escape and another dude dies, and we then get an obligatory strip scene where Susan shocks a shark to death. They all regroup and they plan to swim to the surface. 
On the way up, Cool J gets bit and he doesn't die because, you know, he's a badass. And they learn that the shark wants to escape and go out into the world, so Susan sacrifices herself to distract it. Carter pulls some ultra instinct moves so he doesn't die. <laughs> and Cool J suits it with a bomb harpoon gun and blows it to hell. They relax next to each other as other workers arrive for the next day shift, and we get Cool J's song played over the credits. And do you see why I love this movie? It is non-stop set pieces and thrills barely taking a moment for any character development or moments. When it does, it turns out to be yet another moment for chaos. The shark scenes are badass and deadly, yet so schlocky and cheesy. Everything is straight up shown and executed in the most over the top way possible. In an age where every set has to be a CGI world and background, and especially in shark movies, it's fantastic to look at a film that actually had sets built and used them in the most creative ways possible to give the most thrills on screen. Shark movies are a guilty pleasure of mine. For most of the time, they never present amazing characters or stories or anything inherently deep. Yet, I love them because it's awesome to watch sharks kill shit. Deep Blue Sea is simply a stupidly entertaining shark movie, and it knows that. Rather than being cheap and too stupid because it's easy to make money that way, it uses every element of a blockbuster to provide the viewer with the most fun experience. I'm super glad this movie exists, and it's fantastic that it was untouched by the cheap sci-fi original bullshit that other shark movies have. Wait. Wait a minute, what is this? No, this can't be true. Oh god. This video is made possible thanks to these lovely Patreon supporters, Christian St. Croix, Charlie Bidgood, Mike Nelson, YT Thunder, Pedro, Freddy, and Provokin. And thank you to all these other lovely Patreon supporters. It really means a lot that you guys are supporting me.